Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, somebody. Okay, so we continue this Maimon. <coughs> Beautiful Maimon concerning the Lahovin uh, in Yerashvi. To understand the concept of Rabbi Shimon Bayechoy. So the Rebbe explains, in his mind, beautiful Maima, that um, we're all now in the concept of five levels of the Neshama. There are five levels of the Neshama. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, Yechida. There's a Nefesh, there's a soul, there's a Ruach, the spirit of the soul. There's a Neshama. With those three, those three alone are connected. Nefesh, Ruch, Neshama is the uh, Nefesh is the most the lowest level of the soul. Um, and uh, Chaya is the um, is the uh, I mean Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama. The, the, the Ruach is the is the is the emotion of the soul, and the uh, Neshama is the uh, is the Seichel of the soul. Chaya is the life of the soul. Chaya and Yechida is the, the quintessential part of the soul. The essence of the soul. So Yechida Sheba Nefesh is the highest level of the soul. And it's, it's even though it's part of the other four levels of the soul, but it's totally above and beyond the other four levels of the soul. And the Rebbe, the Rebbe Marash, which is Maim is based on the Rebbe Marash, which is the fourth, who's the fourth Lubavitch Rebbe, goes a little deeper into the Yechidah Shebenefesh, the oneness of the soul, and he's going to explain that Yechidah Shebenefesh, the oneness of the soul, is split into two levels itself. Because Yechidah Shebenefesh, how is it, why is it, even though it's part of the soul, the, the, fr- the framework, the DNA, the five levels of the soul, so in essence, it's really part of the soul itself. But since it's totally as it's part of the soul, it's above the soul. It's higher than the soul itself. So Yechidah Shebenefesh has within it two levels. One level is the way it's connected to the other four, the other three level, the other four levels of the soul, and one of it where the way it's above and beyond it. So you have, for example. You have, you know, the the SS Fides, you do you see we see the difference between Nadizal and the Alter Rebbe in the way he counts the SS Fides. The Alter Rebbe starts the first fit of a Chachma, while the Nadizal starts of a Keser. Because the Alter Rebbe holds that Keser is the crown of the king, is even though that's connected to the, the Chachma, but it's higher than Chachma. And that's why in Keser itself there's two levels. There's the way Keser is above and beyond, higher than the aspect of Chachma, above and beyond the aspect of wisdom, and the way there is Keser, where it has some kind of a connection to wisdom. And that's why Keser, the lever of Keser in Kabbalah, is the crown of the king. It stands above his head. It doesn't, it's like hovers above him. It's connected, it fits him very comfortably, but it's above him. Keser Shalom Melech. So here the Alter Rebbe explains the greatness, the power of the aspect of Yechidah Shebenefesh, the oneness of the soul. Because that oneness of the soul, why would we call it one? Because it comes from the aspect of Achelik Elakam Imal Mamich, which is only the Ebeshter who's the one. Only Avaya Echod. The Ebeshter we, 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 call, uh, we call the concept of one. Shema Yisrael Hashem Akeda Hashem Echod. That there's only one oneness in the world. And that oneness in the world is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And we have that we call the Neshama also a Yachid. That he also has a spark of that oneness. And that's why the Alter Rebbe says that, uh, that a Neshama is a Chelek Elakam and Ma'am Mamish. Because he has, every Neshama has Yechid Hashem Nefesh. Has the oneness in him. But it's such a high level, it's such a chalik, it's such so close to the Abish, so part of godliness, that it's very difficult for this, 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 this oneness, this, this, this unbelievable earth to be able to be part of the human being. And that's why it's, 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 it's something that's very far and very deep above, above him. 
So let's. So this is the Maim. I'll just read it inside. With the, with, with the Rebbe, it says this. So since the Yichid of each individual Jew is incompatible higher than the other levels of the soul, despite the fact that Yichida, the oneness, has some relevance to, to, to creation, the Yichid of Teda, which is above the limits of creation, over here the Alter Rebbe is talking about the, uh, the oneness of Teda, the Shmosa that I saw, that in that, that if you remember we mentioned last uh, I don't know which week it is we mentioned on Tuesday nishmasa the nishmasa the raisa that the that the that teira shibiksav and teira teira nigla the teira is like the goof of teira the body of of, of teira the body of Yiddishkeit and you have the nishama the teira which is chsidis. See, this is Nisham in the Torah. It's called, and it's called in Kabbalah, Nishmasei di Nishmasei Deiraisa. The soul of the soul. That's a whole, the whole other subject. What's the meaning of the soul of the soul? But in simple, it means taking this concept. Because it, it, since the, the soul of the Raisa, which is Torah, which is Nisham the Torah, but within Nisham the Torah, you have Yechida Sheb Sheben Nefesh. You have Nisham. You have the Yechida of the soul. Which is nishmasa dinishmasa daraisa, which is the soul of the soul. That means you have within the soul a higher level of the soul, and that's the oneness of the soul. So thus, like you have the oneness of the soul in a body, you have the oneness of the soul in daraisa in the learning of Torah. So you have you have the concept, as I mentioned, the pidus ha Torah, the garden of the Torah, which in this garden, the soida Torah, in the garden. That has within the pshat, the simple meaning of the goof of the pietas, the, the beauty of the pietas, of this garden. That it has the simple meaning of the Torah, the laws of the Torah, the understanding of the Torah. And you have, you have within this garden, them as the, 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 the delusions of the Torah, the drush, the beautiful expansion of the Torah. And you have soidat Torah. You have the hidden aspect of the Torah, which is Nishmasa Deiraisa, which is the soul of the Torah, which has within it Nishmasa De Nishmasa, the soul of the soul, which is the oneness of the soul, which is the Soy, the Kabbalah of the Torah, Chsidus of the Torah. So the Yechid of the Torah, which is above the limits of creation, is certainly incompatible higher than other aspects of the Torah. Pneumius HaTorah. Pneumius HaTorah, which we're learning right now. He is described as the soul of the soul of Tata, which is higher than the soul of Tata and the body of Tata. So that was the Gilui of Rajvi. The Rajvi came, came to the world to reveal the Nishmasa, the Nishama, the Tata, the soul of the soul, the Yechida of the Tata. And that's why we understand why the Tanoim of his time, until today, we want to connect to the shmas and the shmas of the Torah, the soul of the soul, to the essence of the Torah. So this is why this ex- explains the Rebbe says why other Tanoim needed to praise the Rashbi. So the Rebbe continues that Rashbi had reached the level of Yechida, which was the source of the Yechida of the Torah. The Rashbi reached the highest levels of primis of the essence of the Torah. However, the other Tanaim had not reached this level of Yechida and learned the body of the Torah to refine the world by clarifying the particular halachas of the Torah. Since they were on the incompatible lower level than the Rashbi, the other Tanaim needed to praise him in order to make him relevant to him, them relevant to him. And arouse his desire to influence the learning of Tata, as explained in the first section of the Maim. So now the Rebbe Marash, the Rebbe continues the, 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 the Maim of the Rebbe Marash, the fourth Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebbe Marash explains that Yechid has two levels. I just mentioned it right now. Yechid has two levels. In the oneness of the soul, there's two levels into that oneness. The lower level, which influences the lower level of the soul. You have the one level of Yechidah and Nefesh that, that makes, that it's called the oneness. So it comes one with the lower levels of the other four levels of the Neshama. Chaya, Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama. It, it influences and it gives it 
an energy. It gives it, a, a, a gives it, a, it gives it its chayes. So that's the lower level of yichida together, right? So the influence of the lower level of the soul and the higher level of which is connected to Hashem's essence. Chelek eleka mimal mamish, as the Alter Reb writes, it's a part of God mamish, mamish, really. Not something that uh, philosophy has. That's what Alter Reb adds. Mamish in in, in the Kabbalah it just says chelek eleka mimal. Al Rebbe takes a uh, takes a statement of the Zoyar that had done in the Sham as a chelik alaka, and he adds the word in Tanya mamish. Mamish means mamoshi, something that that that's real, that, that you can touch it, something he has that has density. So the Al Rebbe says it's not a philosophy that you have that you know is a part of the Eibushta. It's a reality. It's a fact. It's a real. It's a real thing. So that Yechidah Shebenefesh, that oneness of the soul, is mamish a part of the Yebishter. It's a chelik alaka. And that is, that if you understand what means a part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Yechidah Shebenefesh, that you understand how the Neshama, that part of the Neshama is above and beyond. The Shmosah, the Neshmosah, the Neshama, the soul of the soul. So it goes higher and above and beyond reality. So every one of us is above and beyond reality. We we in reality. We are in the and beguf, and we. But because our in the has a chiddush and nefesh, we are above reality. L'chaim. So the Reb Mashaz explains, yeah, the two levels together they enable the yichidam. To serve as a connection intermediary that unites the other levels of the soul to the essence of godliness. And why do you need these two levels in the Yechidah Shem and Efesh? Because you want to connect to the soul. You want the, 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 the Neshama wants to connect to Atzmas. So the Neshama has to have within it two concepts. To be able to connect to, to something that's higher than itself, it has to have within it itself itself and something that's higher than itself. It has to have the concept of the way it's connected to be able to connect to the lowest levels, and to come down to a nefesh, which is nefesh or the that to be able to come down to a nefesh and give it life, and to, at the same moment, to be able to have something that's above it. So that's why, within this nefesh, that has a chidosh of a nefesh, in the neshama, I mean, that it has a chidosh of a neshama, it has a neshama of the neshama, so it gives it the capability to have two opposites. And now, it can have both worlds. It can have the up, the low, it can come down to a goof, and it can be above and beyond. So that's the beauty of this neshama. It has both entities. Yet yeah, they're able to yichida, to serve as a connection to mediate, unites the other level of the soul in the essence of godliness. The Rebbe Marash refers to this, to this, to Rebbe Marash, this Maimah, refers to this higher level as helem shenotzerach atzmei, a concealment of godness for the sake of the higher level of Yechidi itself. Helem shenotzerach atzmei, not a concealment that enables the transmission of this relevant to a lower level, but the Yechidi Shem Nefesh is there for itself. Helem shenotzerach atzmei, it's there for itself. It's not there for any other reason. In a way, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, the Havdal, because the, the Nisham is not compared to the Abishta, but the Havdal, the, the, the Ramam explains the concept of, of God. God is there for itself. He explains in, in the beginning of, of the Ramam, to understand a creator means that the Abishta doesn't need anything else. What is there for itself? Everything else is there for something else. When something is there for something else, then it's not there, for, then, it, then it's a lower level. It needs to come on to something else. What in the world is there for itself? No other reason. And that's the Abishta. The Abishta is there for itself. He doesn't need the world. And he, he, he's there before the creation. He will need it after the creation. The Abishta doesn't need anything. He's not there for anything else. 
so too, in essence, where do you find the world? The Raman writes, where do you find the world? A concept that's there for itself. Nothing. Everything else in the world needs something else. Everything else is created for something else. And we, the whole world, needs the Abishta. <laughs> the whole world needs the Abishta. The upper world and the whole world needs God. So then the, the whole world is, 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 is a boida. Is a, I mean, it's a nivra. It's a creation. And therefore, it needs a creator. It needs, it, it needs something else. The Abishta doesn't need anything else. It's there for itself. So the Rebbe Marash says, the Abishta put, that's why it says, Nasa Adam Talmenu Kid Musenu. That the Abish says, let's make man like, uh, let me make a human being a little bit that'll have it within him a spark of me. And that's the spark of the Abish. They gave within every person. That every human being, every yid, has within him a chela kalakami mal mamish. He's there for itself. He's not there for something else. And what is there for? He's there for God. Like that's his essence. His essence is he's a yid. And that's why Yisrael, Yisrael, a yid can do anything right and it can do everything wrong. And he's still a yid. Hasn't changed his DNA. Because a yid is there for itself. He's not affected by what he does and what he doesn't do. He affects the world by what he does and what he doesn't do. But he doesn't affect himself. We say it every day in our davening. I think I say it many times. The soul that you put within me is pure. The Neshama, as the Alter Rebbe explains in Chesidus and Tanya, the Neshama doesn't need anything. The Neshama doesn't come down for the world for itself. It comes down for the world for the goof. He himself is a chelik alakam and mal mamish. The part of the Abish is a Muslim. He's complete. Because if you're a chelik alakam and mal mamish, if you're a part of the Abish, then you, the, then in essence, you have your chidish of nefesh, you're there for itself. It's a very deep concept. In Chassidus, but it's something in, in Kabbalah, and it's something that we need to learn and learn and learn. Until we understand it to the best of each one of our capabilities, to understand this concept, the Yechidah Sheba Nefesh. And what it means to each and one, every one of us, the concept of because this, this is the aspect of our learning, our Seichel. So we can be able to learn and comprehend what is the meaning of Yechidah Sheba Nefesh to each and every one of us. What is it, how does it translate to, to, to each and every one of us? Without the Rebbe wrote in Tanya, that a nesham is a chelik elakam imal mamish. What was the, what do you want to impress upon us with this concept that a nesham is a chelik elakam imal mamish? The Alter Rebbe did not say it just as a as a one liner, as a you know a headliner to impress upon us something. He, 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 I mean to just say something. Wow, great statement, phenomenal statement. No, the Alter Rebbe said it so that we would be able, so we change the way we understand things. We would understand it. We would comprehend it. And we would we would transmit it into a into a reality, make it a mamish, make it a mamish. Connect our yichidus shemenefesh. How do we connect our yichidus shemenefesh? So since yichidus in general is incompatible higher than the other levels of the soul, the higher level yichidus is certainly incompatible than the other levels of the soul. If the lower level of the soul, the of the of the of the yichidus shemenefesh. Is a is a really a high level of the soul. It's the it's 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 part of the other four levels, but it's higher. Now you go to the shmos and the shmos and the raisa, the taira. I mean, of the soul. I'm mixing between all the different things. So you have you have the shmos and the shmos. You have the soul of the soul of taira. The soul of the soul of of of, of a soul itself. Because it's all it's all connected. When you say, that's what he said, the concept of Teda and Ayid and the Abishta is a, is a circle. It's a, it's a circle. The Abishta connected, the, the, the three things that are, that are connected to one another. The Abishta, the Teda, and Ayid. Because the, the Abishta created the world because of the Teda and because of Ayid. Because of us. That we would do the Teda. And we would connect the Teda to, to God. 
Sometimes we can learn Tata and we can connect it to the Tata. That's how it has to do with the Abish, the Chas Shalom. So we always need to connect the Tata to the Abish, to God. And in God, we're supposed to connect the Tata to the highest levels, to Atzimus, to the essence of HaKadosh Baruch. Noisin HaTata, the giver of the Tata. So now, since Yechid is certainly higher than the other levels, the praises of Tatanaim were even able to reach the higher level of Helen, the Tatanaim wanted to reach the level of Rashbi, that the Rashbi, Rabshim Mechai, should, should give them and connect with them and transmit to them Yechid Shabbenefesh in Helam Tzera Chatzmei the Neshmas and Neshmas of the Raisa they wanted him to teach them and to influence them and to elevate them to the highest levels of Tzera to Yechid Shabbatzera to the oneness of the Tzera and they understood that they were students even though they were they were they, they were they were they were his colleagues but they they understood. That, he, that, that in the aspect of this concept of the Yisaitis HaTeda, in Kabbalah Tebetei, the oneness of Teda, he's going to be able to give it to them. And therefore they wanted it from them. They became his students. In this concept. And they wanted him to reveal to them. And not only to reveal to them, but to impress upon them, teach them. And to elevate them also to the level of Yechidosh HaTeda, to the oneness of the Teda, to the Seidi HaTeda, to Kabbalah Shabbat Teda. Or as the, as the Rebbe Marash says over here, the Shema Seidi the Teda, and the Shema Seidi the Shema Seidi the Teda, the soul of the Teda, and to the soul of the soul of the Teda. Or as the Rebbe Marash writes over here, Helem Shalat Seidach Atzmei, the concept of the concealment of godliness as a sake for itself. So they awaken his, his desire to influence the learning of Teda with the ultimate level of Yechida. Beautiful. We end the second section of this Maima. That'll be the first section of this Maima. Now the Rebbe continues to the second section of this Maima, page 15. Again, I'm telling you, if you're learning with me, just go to, go to simply com and download this Maima, La Havin in Rajbi, to understand the concept of the Rajbi. The Rebbe continues in section number two. In this section, the Rebbe begins by asking how these praises were able to accomplish this goal. So now we have to understand how praises, we understand what the Tanoi wanted to accomplish, and the praises of, 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 of the Tanoi created this uh, relevance between the, the, them and Abshim Bayechoi, how are they accomplished? Two praises. If the Rashbi was incompatible greater than the other Tanoim, what significance would their praises have to him? What are you praising him? Who, he's much higher than them. He's on a much deeper level than them. How can a praise affect in him that he would want to, be, want to teach him? In essence, the question is, how do our praises that the Abish was much higher and greater self understood than any human being, what would help our praises? You're Mashabeach Kodesh Baruch Hu. You're like, what are you to my, what is it, what am I to be Mashabeach Kodesh Baruch Hu? What is my relationship that can have any kind of, what kind of, what kind of praises that I can give? Oh, wow. Zalman Booker is praising him. <laughs> well, I'm nothing. So, so what would, what would tell you? Be I'm going to get daven soon. I'm going to say psukah to Zimra. I'm going to praise God. Wow, God's going to, he's going to be so happy that Zalman Booker praises him. Like he needs my praises. He doesn't eat my praises. He doesn't, he doesn't, my praises don't affect him. He doesn't, we just said the Abish is above and beyond, right? God's above and beyond. And he's in the shmos, and he's the atzmus of the horse. He's there for itself. He does not need me. My praises, are, uh, uh, he doesn't surely need. What are my praises going to help? And why would it help? How did they motivate and influence them? Same question can apply even greater degree to our praise to Hashem. <laughs> our praise to Hashem. We're going to praise Hashem. Like the Ebishta is waiting. Uh, which the Gemara said the Ebishta is waiting. <laughs> That's what I understand. The Ebishta says the Ebishta is waiting for the 10th guy to walk into the show. You know, he's waiting. The ninth guy is waiting. Where's the 10th guy to come to the show? Where's the minion? I wonder where the Ebishta is waiting now. At every door of every show. Where's the minion? Where's the first guy? Forget about the 10th guy. So uh, he closed down the shows. So he wants this now to dive in at home. So 
So God's waiting for me to daven. He's waiting for me. When is Alan Booker going to daven? He needs me to daven. And if I don't daven today, he's, 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 he's going to be depressed. So what is the meaning? It's, it's really it's hard to comprehend. So the Rebbe says, as explained the first section of my mouth, praises awaken Hashem's desire to interact with His creation. That's really what it does. However, Chassid explains that one must reach Hashem's essence in order to awaken a new desire within him. We need to, we want to have davening a rotzen chadash, a new desire. In the terminology of Chassidus, our praises awaken Hashem's desire to express His ultimate essence through the limited of Sfidus. How is it possible that our limited praises are able to reach Hashem's essence? So in essence, <laughs> to be able to have a Ratzon Chodesh, not only to waken up a Ratzon of the Ebeshter, which that's his Tefillah. Tefillah is the concept of Yehi Ratzon. But we want not only a Ratzon, we want a Yerotzon Chodesh. The Ebeshter, create, the Ebeshter has a new will. That's a much deeper concept. So when we, 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 through our davening, we're trying to reach the aspect which is even higher than dust, a rotzen to the world. We're looking for a rotzen chadash, a new beginning, a new reality. How is that possible? How is it possible for us to do that? So the Rebbe explained... In their own, our praises are our praises are insignificant to Hashem. How could an action of a limited creation be meaningful to an ultimate un, un I'm sorry unlimited creator? How is it possible? If you understand, Oyin Seif means unlimited. Every human being is limited. How is it possible for a limited entity? To impress upon an unlimited entity. It's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. If, if, if it made sense, then these two entities had to have something in common. But one is limited. The human is limited. The Abish is unlimited. It's impossible for the limited to affect the unlimited. Because then he's not unlimited. So if I am limited, can affect an unlimited concept then he's not unlimited. An unlimited aspect, if you understand what it means, unlimited, it ain't safe, who has no limit, that means he, he needs, that uh, this entity needs nothing. He's unlimited. He has it before any limited thing could give it to him. So how is how we, who are limited, human beings, who are very limited, or even if they, they are, they are they're not so very limited, they're still limited. Every human being is limited. Even Moshe Rabbeinu who has a limit to, add to, to everything that he does. And so when the God, when Moshe Rabbeinu prayed 515 times, Abish said, stop praying. So there's a, there's a limit. There's a limit. Abish says, enough. Enough. This came to a limit. But Abish is unlimited. So how is it possible? Nevertheless, because Hashem... Oh, the answer is not because of us. The answer is, is because that's what Hashem wanted. Hashem says your praise is going to help. Not that I think, oh, I'm such a high prayer. I am such an unbelievable... I know how to daven. I know the deepest levels of davening and I can go and affect it. I'm a garnished. I'm a nothing. And the, to the Abishta, to God. But God said that it's going to affect it. The Abishta said, I have that desire. So the Abishta, God himself said it, 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 it. He wanted it. Why did he want it? That's his, that's his issues. I don't know why he wanted it. Because why would he want something he doesn't need? But the Abishta says, I want it. I want you to dive in. Because Hashem desired our service and praises of Him. The Abish says, because when we daven, 
But we daven. That's what the Gemara says. That davening is, is like a carbon. It's like a sacrifice. And we find something fascinating by a sacrifice. If you look at Baisha Vayikra, this is the book of the Leviticus. It mentions many times, Nachas Ruach. That when we brought a sacrifice, it was a Nachas Ruach. It was a pleasing thing. And the Gemara says, Why, what does it mean a Nachas Ruach? That it was pleasing to God. Nachas Ruach Shamaiti Nasr Tzayni. It's a Nachas Ruach to me that I've asked you and, 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 and you did what I've asked. You did my desire. You did my Ratzin. I will. What is the Ebishtim Karbonis? We know that the Ebishtim himself expressed himself to Dovan of Allah. Do I need all these sacrifices? Do I need all these bulls? Do I need all these, these oxes? I need this. Bosh it. I, 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 I need this. I don't. I want it. That's my desire. It's not what I need. I'm a, <laughs> the Ebishtim is unlimited. So therefore, it's not what I need, it's what I want. What I wanted, that's my desire. Now, why would the Abish do that? Because now the Abish made us relevant. The Abish just says, I don't need you, but I want you. I need your davening, I want your davening. Your davening is pleasing to me. Not because you're a great davener, because I want it. The Alter Rebbe gives an example of a king who stops a beggar in the street. He stops this beggar in the street and he, he says to him, I want something, I need you. Can you get me a cup of tea? Can you get me a glass of water? That has transformed the beggar. That has changed his life. The king needs him. Does the king need him? He has, he has servants. He has he has a lot of guys. No, you asked him. I want you. Why? That's my purpose. That's my reason. I want you. That has now transformed this beggar into a whole different reality. It could be that we should know that I'm God, you're God. Whatever they don't know what God God's wants. God has desires. He says that's not sin. You cannot ask. That's why it says Shanasi Anachas Ruach. That it's a nachas ruach that I said and my rotsin was done. My rotsin, my will. The tsein is shalodim. We say it in davening. Open your hands. We ask that God open your hands. Who must be and fulfill and satisfy. Kol chai, all living beings rotsin. Not what they need, what they want. You can fulfill a person's needs, but we want to have more than that. We want to have tainug. We want the person to have tainug. He should have the light, and that's his rotsin. It's more than his needs. It's deeper than his needs. So to the Abish that are rotsin to the world. The Sava Kodesh Baruch Hu, as Kabbalah says, the whole purpose, the whole reason of the creation of the world is the Sava Kodesh Baruch Hu leads with Dira the Abish had a desire, he had a want. Not because he needed it. That's the Abish's Ratzin. That's true Ratzin. That's why the concept of Bechira, free choice, free choice, that's why the Ramah writes, that true Bechira, true free choice is only God. God only has true free choice. Because choice has to be not on a concept of I need something. Because the second I need it, it's not choice. I need it. That's why I, I want it, because I need it. So it's not your choice, you need it. Free choice has to be based on something that I don't need. I can live without it. I don't need it. There's no difference if it's there or not. And I want it. That's what we say, when we said in Ayyotu, we said, Atabachatonu mikola amin. The Abish chose... Am Yisrael. At the time when he chose Am Yisrael, they had no mitzvahs. They were part of, they looked like Egyptians. They were regular, regular Egyptians, like any other Egyptian. And the Abish chose them. Why? Why did he choose the Egyptian nation? Why did he choose the Jews? That's choice. That's what I want. 
Why? Because that's the name which they wanted. Go. That's how you say you, you chosen nation. Go. If, if you call yourself the chosen nation, that's go to ask God. What are you, what are you blaming a Jew on being chosen? They who want to chose him. You have to, uh, be, be, you have to talk to him. Talk to God. Why did he chose? Why did he choose this nation? That's his choice. That's his free choice. So the Abish, they wanted this. Why? I don't know. We can talk in Kabbalah and Chassidus and they go into high deeper levels of the soul. It's still the Abish. That was the, that's what the Abish wanted. That's God's want. That's what we, that's what we say. That's what God wanted. And we were, we have to realize the great schus that the Abish wanted this. Not because we are great and we are so unbelievable. Because that's what the Abishta wanted. And if the Abishta wanted that, we should feel the, the achrayas, the responsibility and the schus, the merit to be wanted. Even though we're not needed, in a way. <coughs> Actually, according to certain levels, our need, the Abishta's want created our need. That's a whole different subject. So the desire of Hashem, our, the Abish is waiting for our davening. Why? Because that's what he wanted. <laughs> He's waiting for me to go and daven. And to say, and to praise him. He wants that. Why? He does not because he needs it. Because that's the Ratzel Shalak Kodesh Baruch It's a higher, much higher than the level of need. So the Abish that made us significant. He made us significant. Not that we are significant. We are significant because God said you're significant. I'm significant. And the eight God in essence made each and every one of us significant. Ain't they same Shabbos? Ain't part the same Shabbos? The Gemara says no people think the same. The Abish made each and every person individually. Every person has their own uniqueness. So unbelievable! The Abish that created, Gemara says the Abish that created everybody, and he gave, and nobody looks the same. Nobody has the same fingerprints because the Abish that gave us each unique, each our own uniqueness, and and the Abish that wanted each and every one of us. Not that he needed us. The Abish that wants each and every one of us, every human being, everybody. Because every human being, the Abish, God created his own uniqueness. And he wants something from each and every one of us. And each and every one of us has something that, another, that needs to be accomplished in the world that the, that the other person cannot accomplish it. Has something the Abish wants. And I cannot accomplish what God wants for you. And you cannot accomplish what God wants for me. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> good statement, Russ. That's in the lower level. That's that's you're right. That's correct. Because the Abish said that. God said, "If you follow the Torah, and I'll give you, uh, I'll give you all you need." But that's that's in the basic levels of of the human being. And 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 that's in, in, in that needs to be done. There's no argument. I'm not arguing with that. But I'm go- we need to go a little deeper. We need to go a step fir- a, st- a step deeper. Because you see, in the davening, we do the same thing. That's, you know, if the Pesukah with Zimra and Shema, we come to Shemanesa and we ask God for our needs. So it's nothing, I'm not taking away from that. That the needs can be the concept of one's needs. But it's also, Chassidus explains, that why do we come to Shemanesa and ask for God's needs? Shemanesa is a time when we come to the oneness of, our, of, 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 of davening, to the ultimate bittel, and then we ask for our needs. Why wouldn't we just talk about spirituality? Why would we come in that time to ask for, from God our needs? Because then we ask our needs for the right reasons. We want to live. We want baruch aleinu. We want to have health. We want all these things because we want to serve the Abish. It's not because we want to be able to live and have a good life only. 
No, we want to have a good life to serve God. And, and, and then we come to the real reason of why we want to have a good life. And why we want to be healthy. And we need to be wealthy. Because we want all this Lamar Hashem to the service of God. Because the more that we have it, the more we can change the world. And that's the Avayda. The, the real Dinah the whole purpose of why this, like the, the, like the princess asked the, asked the Abbe Kiva, why is there all this gold in the world? And he said, because he created all this gold for the Beis Amidash. He created all this gold for the Beis Amidash. And the leftovers, there was leftovers so the rest of the world can enjoy gold. Silver, except everything was everything the Abish created in the world was a creative because he wanted it. And that's what we are here in the world for. We're in the, here in the world for Yisgada Yisgada Shmeid Abba to make the, the Abish's name greater. So that's why I need all this Gashmias. And all this reality, this physical reality. But le- we're not talking about that right now. We're going now into the essence. We have to go both ways. We have to, we, we, we do both ways. We don't dive in a whole day. <laughs> we then go to work. And we go into the world. And why do we dive in first? Because we want that our davening, our, our connection to God, should influence in the way we do our day-to-day work. That it should be influenced with, with, the, with the concept of the Abish, of God. That's what the Baal Shem Tev would say. That what is the panos of the Abish? Is when you ask a Jew, how is his day? And he says, Baruch Hashem. How is his success in your business day? Baruch Hashem. So a Jew should say, Baruch Hashem. Thank God. Even though, what do you mean, thank God? I worked hard. I did a lot of, it, it was a lot of slavery. It was a lot of hard work. It was not easy to accomplish what I had to accomplish today. But it's Baruch Hashem. It's of course the Baruch of the Abishta. It's because the Abishta wants that I should be successful today. self God says, wow, you're going to bring godliness into the world. I need to give you more success. That's why Avram Avinu, God promised him wealth. Lech lecha me'aytzecha, go out. And the Abishta promises, I'm going to give you wealth. Why? Because he understood Avram Avinu, through his wealth, he's going to influence the world. He's going to change the world. And what he did is exactly what he did. He changed the world. But Avram Avinu was a billionaire. But he took his, he took his, he took his, 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 all his wealth, and all, for the aspect of service of Hashem. Same thing, Rabbi Yudha Nasi. Rabbi Yudha Nasi, the Gemara says, was the wealthiest Jew in Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi Yudha Nasi, one who wrote the Mishnah, and then he said, right before he died, he said that God could be my witness that I never had any personal tainik for this world. Imagine, Abu Nasi, the wealthiest person, the Gemara says, had everything on his table, said I didn't have any, that was not my personal honor. I took all my wealth and I used it for the service of Hashem. I took all this, the whole world and everything that I had when it was only for the service of the Abishta. It was not for my personal needs. I did it for, I understood what the Abishta wanted, what God wanted that I should do in the world. And I did it. And I accomplished it. So that's our avoidant. We know the stories of Yudah. Now we're not going to be the Yudah Nasi. <coughs> it's going to be hard, hard to be, to be Avram Avinu. But we need to work, work on that. We need a small step forward. We need to be a little bit like Rabbi Yudanas. We need to be a little bit like, 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 like uh, Avram Avinu. Uh, the Gemara says, why do we say the stories Maisa of is similar about him? We learn the stories of Avram Avinu. We hear the stories of, of Chachamim. We listen to the stories of Rabbi Yudanas in the Gemara. And we, it's a simon to us. Similar about him. It's a sign to us that we can, we can do that also. Each and every one of us, a little bit in our way, we can also accomplish this concept of having of of of, a, of, of, of trying to, to 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 do this in our lives. So I want to wish you all, as we come to the end of the, the today's class, as we're journeying in this maimer, fascinating maimer, 
truly a beautiful Maimer, and um, really deep stuff that I, I am hoping that I'm, um, I'm, I'm uh, transmitting it correctly um, to the best of my abilities, especially at 6 o'clock in the morning these days. So I want to wish you all a wonderful uh, day, a wonderful night of Shabbos, a wonderful Shabbos, and uh, through our learning of Rabbi Shimma Echai, learning the greatness of Rabbi Shimma Echai, that Rabbi Shimma Echai said himself that I can, I can bring about forgiveness to the world, myself. So we're asking Rabbi Shimma Echai through learning about him, trying to connect to Rabbi Shimma Echai, that he should bring about the concept of uh, forgiveness in the world. And, uh, and, and, and it should, we should all have a, a, a full, those who need a full shleimer should have a full shleimer. The whole world should have a full shleimer, a complete recovery. And we should all dance like Tzeno Akdosha with the bonfires of Abshim Be'echoi. B'mheira, b'yameinu mamish. Have a wonderful and beautiful day and a beautiful Shabbos. We'll be in touch. We'll continue to buy Mimich next Tuesday at 6.15 a.m. Have a wonderful day.